Hello everyone, I'm Choi, a teacher. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Teacher Choice Classroom, where you can learn about economics, English, math, organization and management, and history. Before we start, let me show you some disclaimer. No person or agency asked or forced me to make video lessons. Kusang loo po ang paggawa na itong video at walang direktiba sa DepEd tungkol dito. My students are not compelled to watch this video. No student is left behind. Okay lang na hindi mapanood ng alinman sa mga estudyante na walang paraan na makapag-online. My students who watch this video will not get any incentives or additional points. Hindi basihan ang video ito ng grado ng aking mga estudyante dahil ang laman ng video ay nasulat na sa kanilang modules. This video is not exclusive to my classes and school. It is for everyone. The concepts and knowledge gained in this subject can be applied not only in high school but also in college kasi mayroong economic subject pa rin doon sa piling kurso. And some concepts are just repeating. Maaari din itong magamit ng mga kapwa guro sa pagtuturo. This is purely a supplemental lesson. Today, we are going to talk about economics and applied economics. Ang applied economics ay tinuturo sa senior high school sa ABM and Gas Strand. Sa public school, ito yung dating mga learning competencies na tinatawag ng yung most essential learning competencies. In this lesson, ang MELC ay the learners differentiate economics as social science and applied science in terms of nature and scope. There are learning objectives. At the end of the lesson, the learner shall be able to know the definition of economics and the basics, differentiate normative and positive economics, distinguish the division of economics, Identify the four factors of production. Learn the three economic questions. Compare the different economic systems. Analyze the importance of applied economics. Elaborate on the different economic theories. As mentioned on the previous slide, these are the topics to be discussed. The basics. Positive and normative economics, division of economics, factors of production, basic economic questions, economic systems, the great economists, and their theories, and intro to applied economics. What is economics? Economics is the use or allocation of scarce resources to meet man's unlimited needs and wants. This is by Richard Lipsy. People cannot have everything they want. Consumers are limited by their income, while producers are limited by the factors of production. So ang consumer or mamimili ay kailangan mag-budget at magtipid minsan. Habang ang producer ay kailangan magplano kung ano ang gagawing produkto o serbisyo. Kapwa limitado ang pinagkukunan o resources ni consumer at producer. Another meaning, economics is the study of how people allocate scarce resources for production, distribution, and consumption, both individually and collectively. So nandun pa rin, ang word na scars. Is economics a social science? But before answering that question, let us define what social science is first. 
Social science is the branch of science devoted to the study of societies and the relationships among individuals within those societies. So the answer is yes. Economics is considered a social science because it tries to understand how people behave and interact within a society. Sino bang nagi interact? So mainly that is the producer and the consumers. It's all about choices. Bakit kailang mamili? Sa economics na itinuturo sa junior high school, meron tinatawag na kakulangan at kakapusan. But in English, it is called scarcity. Scarcity is the insufficiency or inadequacy of economic resources and as a result, we have to decide and choose. Scarcity is a condition of why people study and practice economics. Sa makatuwid, kung walang kakulangan at kakapusan o scarcity, there is no need na pag-aralan pa ang economics. Why do we have to choose? Consumers cannot spend money twice. Ang pera na gastos mo ay wala na at di na magagamit ulit sa ibang bagay pa. Example, money spent on a cell phone cannot be spent again on buying a TV. On the other hand, producers cannot use resources again once they are used up. Ganoon din si producer yung resources o pinagkukunan ng yaman kapag nagamit na, wala na din at di na rin magagamit sa ibang bagay. For example, a farmer who decides to use his land for producing corn gives up the opportunity to produce rice. So yung lupa na gamit na sa pagtatanim ng mais, di na pwede sa palay. In economics, we have what we call law of scarcity. Makikita sa timbangan na mas mabigat or madami ang needs and wants ng tao kumpara sa resources or pinagkukunang yaman. The law of scarcity means an economic system cannot produce all goods and services that consumers want. And most consumers do not have the resources to purchase everything they want. Ano ngayon ang magiging resulta kung may kakulangan o kakapusan magkakaroon ng trade-off? What is trade-off? Trade-off is the exchange or choosing between alternatives. It is a reality of life that getting one thing would mean giving up another thing. Katulad halimbawa, kung limited ang pera ng mag-asawa, saan nila gagastusan ito? Sa house renovation ba? Or pagbili ng sasakyan? So that is the trade-off. Maliban sa trade-off, ano pa ang isang resulta ng scarcity? Ito ang opportunity cost. It is the value or cost of the next best for gun choice alternative. Ito yung hindi mo pinili. In other words, opportunity cost represents the benefits that could have been gained by taking a different decision. Remember, could have been gained kasi hindi mo naman siya pinili. Para bang yung the one that got away. For example, may nanay na nagtatrabaho pero pinili niyang maging full-time mom. So ang opportunity cost neto ay ang salary o sweldo na dapat ay sanasahod niya kung nag-work pa din siya. Ano naman ang normative and positive economics? In making decisions, economists usually consider both facts and assumptions. In studying economics, we must know the difference between positive and normative economics. 
Positive economics describes and explains various economic phenomena or what is scenario. Positive economics is based on facts. Example, public health care increases government expenditures. Sa Tagalog, pag daw dumami ang gastusing tulong pang medikal ng gobyerno, darami din ang kanyang gastusin. Totoo naman yun, kahit saan pa namang bansa, it will apply. On the other hand, normative economics focuses on the value of economic fairness or what the economy should be. In other words, normative economics is based on value judgments. So ano yung pinapalagay na tama? Example, best health care must be free to all citizens. Depende pa rin yan. So, pero pwedeng tama o hindi. Paano kung walang pondo ang gobyerno? Mabibigay kanya niya yung best health care sa lahat? Sa makatwid, ang positive economics ay base sa katotohanan habang ang normative economics ay base sa pagpapalagay. Ano ba ang pinagkaiba ng microeconomics at macroeconomics? Microeconomics is the close-up view of the economy, studying individual and business decisions. It is also called the bottom-up approach that focuses on supply and demand and the other forces that determine price levels. Included dito sa microeconomics yung Individuals, households, markets, firms, and industries. It deals with the decision of single economic variables such as demand, price, consumer, etc. On the other hand, macroeconomics is the overall view of the economy looking at the decisions of countries and governments. It takes a top-down approach that tries to determine the course of the economy as a whole. It focuses on the aggregate supply and demand. You see the word aggregate, ito yung pinagsama-sama. Included dun sa macro economics, yung national output, yun yung GDP and GNP. Economic growth, Overall price level, monetary and fiscal policy, unemployment, government spending, etc. It deals with the averages and aggregates of the entire economy. So, buong bansa. Pinagsama-samang uh, supply and demand. Ganon. Let's compare the two further para lalong maintindihan. On the left side, ang microeconomics. Sa right side, macroeconomics. It studies individual income. Macro studies national income. Micro analyzes demand and supply of labor. Macro analyzes total employment in the economy. Micro, deals with households and firms' decisions. Macro, deals with aggregate decisions. Micro, studies individual prices. Macro, studies overall price level. Micro, analyzes demand and supply of goods. Macro, analyzes aggregate demand and aggregate supply. So obviously, from the word micro, maliit, macro, malaki. So itong dalawa, they are interdependent and complementary sa isa't isa. But they also overlap at times. Let's discuss the factors of production. In economics, the factors of production sometimes called economic resources or inputs, are essential to produce goods and services. 
These are land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship. Sa wikang Tagalog, ito ay tinatawag ng mga salik ng produksyon, pinagkukunang yaman na may kapakinabangan sa produksyon upang makagawa ng mga bagay na sasagot sa kagustuhan at pangangailangan ng tao. Kung wala ang mga salik ng produksyon, hindi makakalikha ng produkto. Una, land. It includes all the natural resources such as fertile soil, trees, minerals, and water which can be sources of raw materials to produce goods or products. Mga bagay na nanggagaling sa kapaligiran na ginagamit sa paggawa ng produkto, hindi lamang sa tinataniman ng mga magsasaka o pinagtatayuan ng bahay, kundi lahat ng yamang likas sa ibabaw at sa ilalim nito. Kasama na ang yamang tubig, yamang mineral, yamang gubat. Ang lupa ay takda, ang bilang or limited. Halimbawa, sa isang factory ng fruit juice, ang mga prutas at tubig na ginamit ay kabilang sa kategoryang ito. Susunod, capital or capital refers to anything that people produce and later used in the production of other goods and services such as manufacture, aids, tools, machines, equipment, and factories. Mga produktong nakakalikha ng panibagong produkto o mga kalakal na nakakalikha ng iba pang produkto. Halimbawa sa isang pabrika, ang building, mga makina, mga kasangkapan na ginamit upang makabuo ng final products ay tinatawag na kapital. Next, labor. Labor refers to the physical and mental talents of individuals used to produce goods or services. Ito ay ang lakas paggawa o paggawa. Mga tao na siyang lumilinang sa mga bagay-bagay sa kanyang kapaligiran para gawing produkto. Ang tao ang pinakamahalagang salik ng produksyon. Ito ay tumutukoy sa kanyang kakayahan sa produksyon ng kalakal o serbisyo. Huli ay ang entrepreneurship. This is the ability to organize the other resources. Yung mga nabanggit kanina, land, labor, and capital to produce goods and services. It is the ability to establish and operate a business and establish relationships with suppliers, customers, lenders, investors, and others. Tagapag-ugnay siya ng mga tatlong salik na nabanggit upang makabuo ng produkto at serbisyo. Bukod sa tagapag-ugnay, sila rin ay nag-aorganisa nagko-control at nakikipagsapalaran sa mga desisyon sa mga bagay na maaaring makaapekto sa produksyon. Entrepreneurship ay tungkol sa kakayahan at kagustuhan ng isang tao na magsimula ng negosyo. Ano ang kapalit ng apat? Returns of factors of production. The returns to these factors are often described as rent for land, wage for labor, interest for capital, profit for the entrepreneurship. Ang ibig sabihin, ang may-ari ng lupa ay makaka-receive ng renta, ang worker naman or trabahador ay makakatanggap ng sweldo. Ang may-ari ng kapital o puhunan ay entitled sa interest. And lastly, tubo or kita naman para sa entrepreneurship. Ito ang mga references na nagamit sa presentation na ito. So pwede rin yung i-research ang mga to at pag-aralan.